One of these three smart rings is the new Samsung Galaxy Ring. And while all these rings might look the same, they're quite different. Based on my testing of the Galaxy Ring, it does hold promise, mostly for health tracking, less so for sports tracking, honestly. However, my feeling from both the Galaxy Ring and Galaxy Watch launches this year is that the software side of these products is unpolished, especially given what was promised in the Galaxy Unpacked keynote. To show you what I mean, let's look at some of the initial testing that I did. And let's start off with the heart rate tracking performance during exercise. These are the results for cycling indoors, one of the easiest exercises for a device to track. To test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Galaxy Ring against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Each dot here in this plot is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the reference device, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Galaxy Ring. The closer the points are to this blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color the more dots that there are. And as you can see, there's a mediocre agreement at best. Yes, there's quite a few points close to the blue line, but there's also quite a few points here below the blue line, indicating that many heart rate measurements were quite a bit too low. We can also see that the correlation is quite low at 0.67. Correlation cannot be higher than one, so this might not seem too bad, but honestly, a correlation of 0.67 isn't that good compared to the competition. And we can better understand why that is by looking at the individual spinning sessions. And here we see the first example interval spinning session I did, where we honestly see a pretty bad agreement between the Galaxy Ring in red and the ECG chest strap in blue green. Along the horizontal axis, we have the clock time, and my heart rate is here along the vertical axis. As you can see, I did eight intervals each of them leading to a peak in my heart rate. And in none of the cases was the peak fully detected and only three times was it partially detected. So most of the peaks in my heart rate are missed. So that doesn't look very good so far. However, these kinds of interval sessions tend to be quite hard for heart rate trackers since my heart rate rises and drops very quickly. So I decided to also do a VO2 max test where the power at which I cycle slowly rises over time. So my heart rate shows a much more gradual increase. And as you can see here, it was able to track my heart rate for most of the beginning of my training, but at the peak of my heart rate, it still failed. I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe I just held onto the handlebars more tightly, but in any case, it wasn't able to fully detect my heart rate. And for those of you that are curious, my VO2 max was about 63 milliliters per kilogram per minute, which is not that far from the VO2 max value of 65 that Garmin predicts I have, but more on VO2 max in a future video. And I know I look ridiculous and believe me, it isn't fun for me either. But back to the testing, I did another normal interval spinning session with the Galaxy Ring after that, and this again shows quite poor performance. You can see it missed the increase in my heart rate for three out of seven intervals. So it's not quite as bad, but still not good enough for me. Of course, it's very important to know how this kind of performance compares to the competition. Is it better or worse than smart watches? And how does it compare to the market leader in smart rings, the Aura Ring? That overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis in this plot. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Galaxy Ring in red. And as you can see, it's really among some of the poorer performers. Most devices are quite a bit better. And you can also see it's really close to the Aura Ring 3, so the main competitor of the Galaxy Ring. So that's the first indication there might be some inherent problems with using a ring as a heart rate monitor for exercise. And if you want to know what devices are good at heart rate tracking for indoor cycling, well, here I zoom into just the better performing watches. And as you can see, some of the better performers are Apple Watches. I know many Samsung people don't like this, but this just happens to be the case. Also, Huawei devices are quite good. So if you're using Android, that would be an option. But also things like the Pixel Watch 2 and the Fitbit Charge 6 aren't that bad. And if you want a device that works on both Android and iOS, and that is a decent compromise between sports and health tracking, I really like the Whoopstrap 4.0. I honestly don't think that a ring is a good form factor for tracking your heart rate during exercise. The fit and contact with the skin just aren't as consistent as for a watch. But it might be that the Galaxy Ring had an easier time tracking my heart rate while cycling outside. So let's take a look at those results. And before showing you those, I'm hoping that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you. And it also really helps me get access to devices sooner from manufacturers if you leave a like or a comment. But enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at the performance of the Galaxy Ring for outdoor cycling. And here we have that overview for outdoor cycling. And this also doesn't look too good, honestly. 
Yes, some points are somewhat close to the blue line, but there's a big deviation both above and below the blue line, indicating that sometimes the Galaxy Ring detected a too high heart rate and sometimes a too low heart rate. The correlation is now even lower at 0.49, so really not that good. And if you look at the bike rides themselves, again with the reference in blue-green and the Galaxy Ring in red, the Galaxy Ring sometimes follows the rough heart rate patterns like for this first cycling session, but for other sessions it wasn't quite as good, like this one right here. Here it's basically all over the place, where here, here and here you can see these weird increases in heart rate that come out of nowhere. And also this last example bike ride shows some weird dips in heart rate and also some weird peaks, so overall not a very good performance. And if we compare the performance of the Galaxy Ring to other devices out there, we again see it's one of the poorer performers, it's really amongst the lower devices devices in this overview. And similar to indoor cycling, its performance is very close to that of the Aura Ring 3. So again, rings aren't doing that great. So if you want health tracking and sports tracking, the Apple Watch is quite good, but it doesn't have a good data overview. Another option is the Whoop strap, which is quite expensive because of the monthly fee, but it does work quite well. If you want to go for cheaper options, something like the Pixel Watch 2 or the Fibbit Charge 6 are also quite good options. And like before, different Huawei devices are also doing quite well. And if you're wondering where the new Galaxy watches are, well, they're right here and right here. So they're really doing quite okay, at least for cycling outside. We didn't focus on them when we we're looking at the performance for cycling indoors, but there they weren't doing that great. But check out the video up here if you're interested in my initial testing. Now the results you just looked at were based on just three bike rides, and I actually recorded five, but for some reason my heart rate wasn't recorded for the first two. You have to start the exercises from the health app, and I did nothing different the first two times but for some reason it just didn't work for those and this was one of the first indications to me that the integration of the new samsung devices in the health app still wasn't ideal but more on that later let's first talk about sleep and sleep stage tracking and since we just also looked at heart rate tracking can the galaxy ring track your heart rate accurately while you sleep well, I tested that last night and luckily this did a lot better. You can see right here that the Galaxy Ring in red and the reference in blue green tracked very similar heart rate, so that looks very good to me. And we can also make a correlation plot similar to before where we plot the correlation of the heart rate according to the reference versus that of the Galaxy Ring and we see a decent correlation here. Most points are on or at least close to the blue line, though a little bit below it. But overall, the correlation at 0.85 isn't bad at all. And given that we're looking at a relatively narrow heart rate range, this is actually quite good. I'm happy that the Galaxy Ring did much better at tracking my heart rate during sleep versus exercise. This is arguably the more important use case for most people buying the Galaxy Ring. Health tracking in general is probably a bigger focus than sports tracking. Still, good heart rate tracking during sports would have been nice. However, what about the sleep stage tracking? Is this any good? Well, let's take a look. Like most smartwatches out there, the Galaxy Ring tracks four sleep stages deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake time. And here I show the test results when I compare it to an EEG device that can actually measure my brain waves for four nights. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Galaxy Ring. And each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the Galaxy Ring. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now the ZMAX isn't the perfect reference, but I think it's good enough to give us a general impression of the performance of the Galaxy Ring. First of all, we see that about 41% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Galaxy Ring, so not that good. More of it was actually predicted as being light sleep instead at about 51%. Light sleep agreement was okay at close to 70%, with most confusion being with REM sleep, but also a little bit with deep sleep. RAM sleep agreement is also not great at about 52% and quite a bit of it was confused with light sleep instead at about 39%. Now normally for the ZMAX I don't focus on awake time because it tends to detect a lot of these short awake moments that are not really interesting for us. But just for completeness we see that the Samsung Galaxy Watch detected 54% of what the ZMAX said was awake time as awake time as well, so actually not that bad. Now looking at the nights themselves will help us understand that even better and here we have the first night I wanted to share with you. On top we have the sleep stages according to the ZMAX EG headband, with along the horizontal axis the clock time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Galaxy Ring. And in purple right here I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device and I would say there's a marginal agreement. Both of the major sections were detected by the Galaxy Ring but just the duration is a bit different and also right here some extra deep sleep is detected but overall not terrible. And we can do the same thing for REM sleep, which is marked in red right here. 
And as you can see, the Galaxy Ring did detect some of the REM sleep also detected by the EEG device, but it also detected some extra and missed some. So overall, not looking amazing for REM sleep. But interestingly, if you go into the details of the Galaxy app, you can see that the Galaxy Ring, similar to the EEG device, tends to detect a lot of these short awake moments. This is not obvious looking at the main overview, but you can find them if you want to. Again, not a stellar performance by the Galaxy Ring. It's definitely better than some devices, but it's also not a top performer. But let's again put these results into perspective. Before doing that, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter after the summer to share my first results with you sooner. If you're interested, check out this link up here. And that is exactly what we can see right here. This graph shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with different EEG reference devices. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. And the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. Now, this is a slightly complicated overview because we use different reference devices. The device is not marked in any color. We're tested against a Dream 2 EEG headband, my normal reference, but Dream went bankrupt, so I cannot use it anymore. The device is marked in blue purple. We're tested against polysomnography, which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. And the device is marked in green. We're tested against the ZMAX EEG headband, the same one we use in this video. And you can see the results for the Galaxy Ring right here here. So it's really in the middle of the pack. It's not terrible like some of the devices right here and not amazing like some other devices. And you will also notice it's super close to the Galaxy Watch 7 and also the Galaxy Watch Ultra. And also some other Galaxy devices are quite close to this. So the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5, Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and Samsung 4 Classic. So I suspect that most Galaxy devices use this same sleep stage tracking algorithm. And if they have decent heart rate tracking and some other metrics, they probably result in the same sleep stages. So overall, not an amazing performance, but you can do worse. And if you want to look at the better devices, the Aura Ring, for instance, is quite a bit better. And I also showed that this was true in a general overview of scientific literature. If you want to look at other form factors, so normal watches or bands, the Apple Watch is quite good, but also the Whoop Strap and different Fitbit devices are not bad at all. And if you have some more money to spend, the 8 Sleep Pod is also a good sleep stage tracker with also good sleep intervention, so potentially improving your sleep. In addition to the sleep stages and heart rate, there's also other metrics that the Galaxy Ring measures during the night, and one of them is skin temperature. On the right, you can see how my skin temperature varies throughout the night as measured by the Galaxy Ring, and on the left are the measurements of the core body temperature are attached to my torso. And as you can see, the values measured by the two are quite different. The patterns really don't look similar. I couldn't access the raw data, so the plots are a bit ugly. But overall, I hope you can appreciate that there's quite a difference between the two. And I don't think either is inaccurate. I just think the measurements on my finger are different from those on my torso. To be clear, I'm not saying that the Galaxy Ring measures the wrong temperature per se. I just expect that the skin temperature in your extremities will be very different from the temperature on your torso, which in turn will be very different from your core body temperature. The Galaxy Ring can probably detect big deviations from your baseline temperature and possibly also changes in temperature linked to the female menstrual cycle. However, the actual minute to minute changes are probably just not that interesting. Now, I also wanted to compare the heart rate variability or HRV metrics of the Galaxy Ring during sleep to those of an HG chest strap. And these are actually not visible in the health app, or at least I couldn't find them. However, I could find them when I dug through the raw data export of the Samsung health app, which is displayed in red right here. And as you can see, that red line is totally different from what I calculated based on the raw beat to beat intervals in blue green right here. Now, to be clear, I'm just showing you these results for completeness because I don't actually think that the measurements of the Galaxy Ring are wrong because I'm just not sure how Samsung calculates their HRV because there's different ways of doing that. They do label it as RMSSD, which is also what I try to calculate, but I'll contact Samsung, try to find out how they actually calculate it and then do a proper comparison. So don't draw any major conclusions from this. I just wanted to let you know that I'm working on it. And I do have to thank two Samsung employees for reaching out to me after my last video. Hopefully through them, I can get in contact with their engineering department and make better videos by using the information that they can share. Now, before showing you my final conclusions, we have to discuss the current version of the Samsung Health app and the integration of the current wearables. Two things could or maybe even should be improved here. First of all, the details sometimes feel unfinished. I already told you that my Galaxy Ring wasn't connected for the first two bike rides, which was kind of annoying. And something similar was true for my bike's power meter. You need to connect your power meter to the health app to get a cycling metric called FTP, which is basically the highest power output a cyclist can sustain for one hour. Now, DC Rainmaker made a very good video about this and my experience was very similar. I connected my power meter to three different Galaxy phones. 
one connected to my Galaxy Watch Ultra, one to the Watch 7 and one to the Galaxy Ring. And in the end, it only worked on the one connected to the Galaxy Ring so far at least, and only for about one third of the sessions that I tried it. For some reason, you also need to be connected to the internet the moment you add the power meter. And so far, I only got an FTP when I was connected to the internet the entire ride. There are also no clear instructions on the best protocol to measure your FTP. So I tried it both during a VO2 max session where I definitely exerted myself a lot and also during an interval training session where I did quite a heavy effort during my intervals. And in both cases, my FTP was estimated as 179 watts by Samsung Health, which is way too low. Interestingly, during this same VO2 max session connected to the same power meter, Garmin estimated my FTP as 291 watts, almost 100 watts more, which is much closer to the truth. I might need to do a sustained max effort for 4 to 10 minutes with the Galaxy Health app to get a better estimate, but given that there's no guidance anywhere either in the app or online, this again just feels a bit unfinished. And that's not all, I also got a message at some point that the ring auto detected a walk. I thought cool, how long was that walk? Well, percentage sign S long. Now this is probably C or Python code where the percentage S was supposed to be replaced with the actual value string, but this just wasn't coded correctly. So it just feels a bit to me that the app wasn't fully ready yet, but Samsung just pushed it out with the launch anyway. Now the second thing that can be improved is data presentation. If we compare the Samsung Health app to the Aura Ring or Whoopstrap app, the Samsung app just isn't as good. It's not as cluttered as the Apple Health app, but at least the Apple Watch has very accurate tracking and things are a bit better now with the introduction of the Vitals app. Now don't get me wrong, it's not all bad with the Samsung Health app. There's some advice for instance about how active you should be that day and they also provide a sleep score which is nice, though it does honestly have a very oversimplified explanation of how it was calculated. However, based on this explanation, they provide, it does seem that the score is largely based on the time spent in different sleep stages and the sleep stage tracking wasn't that good in my initial test, so I'm not sure how much I would rely on this score. Also, the sleep coaching they provide assigns you a sleep animal, which I find totally cringe honestly, and it seems more suitable for children and adults. All in all, I'm personally not yet a huge fan of the Galaxy Ring, but it doesn't mean there's no potential. The hardware is actually quite good, especially details like the charging case, which has a battery of its own, which is good, and it's much better than the Aura Ring's charging station. You can even see how full the charge of your ring is when you take it off and then look at the blinking patterns of the LEDs, which is quite smart. However, there are a few things that would need to happen for me to be able to recommend the Galaxy Ring to you. First of all, Samsung would need to do a few more sleep studies and improve their sleep stage tracking. And second, they also need to improve the presentation of their data. If those things happen, I would be quite keen to use it, especially since they don't charge you a monthly fee like Aura and Wubu for instance. I do have to say this is a very limited test in this video since it was only tested on me for relatively few days. However, as it stands, the difference between the Galaxy Ring on the one hand and competitors like Aura, Whoop and Apple on the other is just too big for me to use the Galaxy Ring as one of my main trackers personally, which also means I cannot recommend it to you. But stay tuned for my full review of this ring to see if that changes. If you still decide to get a Galaxy Ring, a Whoop strap, an Aura Ring, an Sleep Pod 4, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support this channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on the Galaxy Ring, check out this video of my initial test of the Galaxy Watch Ultra and Watch 7 or this video on my top recommendations for sleep stage tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.